Round well, Terry. I'm glad you're in early. We're going to have a fire practice. <laughs> I see, sir. I'll tell the staff. Oh, no, no, you mustn't do that. We want to see how they, be how they behave in an emergency. Uh, you just stand by and uh, take notes. <laughs> Very well, sir. Uh, uh, when will this occur? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, just uh, keep on your toes, that's all. Howling round the world and looking for the sunshine. Mr. Harvey, Every... uh, the store is about to open. You're not supposed to be on the floor. I'm sorry, Captain Peacock, but you might have tweaked that none of the ladies and gentlemen dummies is wearing wigs. Due to an oversight from display, what I am going to rectify. Then be quick. I would have been a damn tight quick if you hadn't poked your nose in in the first place. <laughs> Don't procrastinate. I shall look that up. And if ain't very polite, I shall probably come back and call you a very long word meaning twit. <laughs> I haven't called it to you yet. I just said I may come back and call you a twit. <laughs> <laughs> that don't look right. <laughs> You're next, Daisy. Fire! 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 Oh, excuse me, sir. That was a bicycle bell. Oh, was it? Uh, good morning, Peacock. Good morning, sir. <laughs> you seem to be very short of staff today. Where is everybody? We're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> My drawers had gummy runners. <laughs> I was just easing them for him. I know it sounds strange, but I assure you it was perfectly innocent. Yes. Fire! Fire! Come on, Peacock, move! That is the store opening bell, sir. Oh, was it? Yes. So it was. Mm. Are you expecting a fire, sir? No, no, of course not. Where are the ladies? No, I, I gave them permission to pop down to the wedgie sale, sir. Wedgie? What's that, golf? No, 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 it's a shoes. It's a, no, they're a sort of um, chunky platform shoe. Their popularity is waning, hence the sale. Uh, that, sir, is the lift bell. Hold on to me, I think I'm getting vertigo. <laughs> Do they look like a couple of Frankenstein rejects? <laughs> It's time you were behind your counters, if you think you can make it. I'm sorry, ladies. It's really out of the question for you to wear those during working hours. Yes, I absolutely agree, sir. They're totally unsuitable. I don't know what you're making all the fuss about. I've had mine for a week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, darling, give us a kiss or I'll bring you a moustache. <laughs> yeah, it won't be you, Kojak. <laughs> Take it off, it's my grandmother to a tea. <laughs> there you are, sir. There's your jacket. And if the sleeves are too long, don't worry, they'll ride up with wear. <laughs> they were too short. No, in that case, they'll ride down with wear. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to say you haven't been out all week? Oh, I've been out. But I mean, I always come home alone, don't I? I mean, it's the birds. They just don't want to know. Well, where have you been looking? Well, last night, there was a Latin American dance class over the co-op. Oh, did you get your divvy? <laughs> You know, all the women there look like Carmen Miranda. Oof, from what I can remember, come out Carmen Miranda, she was quite attractive. Not Carmen Miranda then, Carmen Miranda now. <laughs> anyway, then I went to the Garden of Alla Disco. Oh, I don't know how you can stand all those flashing lights. No, no, they got rid of all them now, and it's all ultraviolet. Do you know, the last time I stood under ultraviolet light, it showed up all my jockey shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where to look. Mind you, everybody else did. <laughs> well, it showed up my two cat teeth. Yeah. I was just about to kiss this bird on the neck when somebody shouted, Dracula lives, and she shot off through the fire. <laughs> I mean, it's all the same. They're only interested in the pop groups anyway. And half of them are dressed up as women. Mm, you can make some terrible mistakes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, then I went to the pally. Well, you should have been all right there. Have you been there lately? All the fellas stand around the wall like this. And all the birds have got the handbags in the middle of the floor and they're dancing, holding hands, going round in a circle. You can't separate them. Well, I'll lend you a handbag. You can join in. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's still staying with me. She's got lots. Yeah. I just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't got very much left. <laughs> Mr. Lucas? Yes, Mr. Upbeats? He didn't upset anybody at the Garden of Aladisco. <laughs> What is that? Are you being served? The Amir wishes to speak to Chief Man. I am the Chief Man. Hazal Rais. Ah, Hazal Rais. 
He put this Arab bird in the club and now he's getting his come up and <laughs> Oh dear, that's the hair, Peacock. It's the Emir of Sidi Ben Daddy. Darby, sir, I shouldn't. What's going on? No, I'm afraid it's you, sir. The sign they're giving is that to ward off the evil eye. <laughs> Good heavens, surely I haven't got an evil eye, have I? No, Khaja, you have an evil ear. <laughs> <laughs> Scarf, Mr. Rumble. Oh, very well. <laughs> How's that? It's my grandmother to a T again. <laughs> yes, I, I think you'd better let me deal with this. You see, having been in the desert, I'm used to the ways of the East. Yes. Sally, Sally, don't ever wonder. Hello? <laughs> Sala, may the, the sun never cease to shine upon your children, your children's children, and your children's children's children. He say, are you mad? I'm only 25. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of Ami's wives. He wishes them to wear trousers in the harem. Trousers in the harem? I'd find that very confusing. <laughs> How many wives does he wish to trouser? 72. <laughs> 72. <laughs> and three on Fridays. Oh, just think about it. Seventy-two wives. <laughs> Why only three on Friday? Perhaps a Roman Catholic. <laughs> Please tell His Eminence that I'm sure we can clothe these flowers of the desert in foliage worthy of their beauty. We are all your slaves. This is our unworthy Mr. Granger. <laughs> I'm the lowly Mr. Lucas. And I'm the humble Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> But Amir wishes his wives to look like European women. Can you show us models? Well, I'm afraid we don't have models here, but I can show you two typical European women. Uh, Mrs. Slocum, Miss Brahms, forward, please. <laughs> Salam. Salami. So, how do you look at this? He say, what crime have they committed to be punished with these terrible things on their feet? <laughs> Uh, the uh, torture is self-imposed. We will talk business. <clears throat> Would you help me, please, sir? <laughs> Mr. Granger, a very wise man, but jointy, creaky. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, Miss Brahms, forward and down. First, show us a sample of trousers. Granger, samples. Would he might have asked that before I got down here? <laughs> I'll get him, Mr. Granger. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, the, um, the summer worsted. <laughs> yeah, one summer worsted coming up. Yes, uh, yes the close weave, it keeps out the sand. Mm. They've been tested at Margate. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me asking, but um, do they get a lot of that sort of wear? <laughs> <laughs> he say he buy one pair for head wife. Sale, Mr. Granger. Uh, what size, Captain Peacock? Ah, uh, yes, the size. Uh, what size? Don't know. I see. Uh, Mrs. Slocum, forward, please. Oh, what the... Stop! Stop! Everybody up! Excuse me, but what have we done wrong? In my country, we are all believers. It's not permitted that women touch women. Man may touch man, but woman may not touch woman. Where did they say they came from? Excuse me, but may man touch woman? Of course. Oh, well, that's all right then. <laughs> then we kill him. Hardly worth a commission, is it, really? <laughs> then are we to take the measurement? <laughs> he may take the measurement. <laughs> I'm not even a believer. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Humphreys. In all this, he can take the measurement of everything, but he doesn't put his hand on him. What did Harris say, Winnie? <laughs> 
Why? You may take measurement, but you may not touch a woman. I see. Do you mind if I have a word with my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Do you follow us, please? Yes. Darling. Yes. Turn round, dear. Luffy. Touch your toes. Malili Rudam. Mm -hmm. I must remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Any minute, now he's going to get his head chopped off. Mr. Lucas, Lady Mr. Humphrey, just say the magic word. Shut sesame. Eighteen to eighteen, step sixty. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, um, aren't we forgetting something? What's that, Captain Peacock? We need the inside leg. Oh, yes, the inside leg. <laughs> Do you mind if I have a word with my friend? <laughs> 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 wonderful, smooth eyes. They'll turn him into an Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you excuse us a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Comfrey? On your marks, Mr. Lucas. Get set. Agnes. <clears throat> Go. Anthony. Oh. 58. Half 58. 29 inside leg, Mr. Green. That'll be 10 pounds. I shall act in it. Yeah, well then. We bargain. One goat, one trouser. <laughs> but we, we do not take goats. Very good goat. Give very good milk. Oh, well, come in handy in the canteen. <laughs> wonderful for your complexion. No goat? No goat. Ah, there's a goat. Beautiful rug. All handmade. Good for floor. We have our own rugs. One rug... One trouser. Very good deal. Uh, sorry, no can do. May Mr. Judge? Yes. Will I be added to the other side? I should not have given it. I should not have given it. The Amir offers wife to the old one. I can't. I can't believe my ears. <laughs> No, I can't believe his eyes. <laughs> it could be a sale. <laughs> no, no, stop, please, stop. We cannot exchange wife for trousers. She very good. Give much pleasure. Some curtains that colour. <laughs> Captain Peacock, aren't you going to put a stop to this? You're all in good time, Mrs. Snooker. <laughs> Sorry, we must have money. Oh, no, we, you see, we, we cannot trade girl for trousers. You trade this girl for that girl and also give us the old one with a face like a lemon. <laughs> Captain Peacock, what did he say? He's improving the offer, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, as I said, we must have money. Ad Alphalus. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 please. I mean, one of these £100 notes would be sufficient. Fire! 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 Never mind the till. Where's my season ticket? Help me with the 
the till, somewhere. Never mind the till, get that case. <laughs> now keep calm, everybody out. Miss... Captain Peacock, help us with the till. I'm sorry, the customers come first. <laughs> Gather round, everybody. Mr. Rumbold would like a word. Well, I hope this isn't going to take long. Mrs. Axelby and I are going to the ice rink tonight. I didn't know you could skate, Mrs. Slocum. Well, we haven't tried yet, but we thought that if we fell down, somebody's bound to pick us up. <laughs> well, I hope we're not delayed. I've got a friend dancing in Swan Lake. Oh, yeah? What's his name? It's a she. I go every night, you know. When she's not looking, I pinch a feather out of her tail. <laughs> what for? To keep as a memento of your affection? No, I'm restuffing a cushion. <laughs> paying attention, Mr. Humphreys. Of course, I was paying attention, Captain Peacock. And my friend Mr. Lucas was paying attention as well, weren't you, Mr. Lucas? Oh, I was. I was, Mr. Humphreys. Yes, I was paying attention. Yes, I was hanging on to Mr. Rumbold's every word. I haven't spoken yet. That's why I'm hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, the practice fire drill this morning was a complete shambles. We can't let another day go by without doing something about it. To which end, we're holding an emergency refresher course. <laughs> Captain Peacock is our fire expert, and he will take over. Thank you, sir. Now, the exits are the main staircase and the two fire stairs at the back. Now, on no account may the lift be used. In the event of anybody being overcome by fumes, it is essential to understand the use of the fireman's lift. Uh, just a minute, you just said we couldn't use the lift. Grams, the fireman's lift is a method of carrying an unconscious person. Speaking of the unconscious, where's Mr. Granger? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Granger, are you free for a fire? <laughs> yes, I am free. Uh, uh, what size? Pay attention, Mr. Granger. Now, uh, the fireman's lift, as I understand it, is something like this. Now, uh, Mr. Humphreys, would you mind being unconscious? Yes. Have I been overcome by fumes or smoke? A combination of both. Right. Let me get in the mood. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I did that at school, you know, in a play. I was Lady Hamilton and I fainted when I heard the dreaded news from Waterloo. Mm. Mr. Humphreys, Nelson wasn't at Waterloo. No, but my mother was. She'd missed the train. <laughs> Can we get on with it? I can't bear the sight of my pussy standing at the door with the tin opener in his mouth. <laughs> well, if you all pay attention... Now, are you ready, Mr Humphreys? I'm too overcome to reply. Oh, yes, you are. Then. Okay, come on, get on. Now then, what you do is this. You lie down at the side of the victim. You grasp the right wrist in the right hand, and then you roll over like so. <laughs> Saying so, Captain Peacock, you're making a right noise up by then. <laughs> I thought he was doing rather well. <laughs> Can I show you how we used to do it when I was in the auxiliary fire service? <laughs> there you are. Can you do anything you like with him? Oh, you wait till you're asked. <laughs> Had you let me finish, Mr. Harmon, I was about to show them the lift from the prone position. Yes, well, I, I think we should all have a go at that. Uh, Mrs. Slocum, you can be the victim. I'm not getting down on the mucky floor. Miss Brahms, get me a chair. Now, uh, who shall we have to rescue her? Uh, Mr. Lucas, how would you like to rescue Mrs. Slocum? <laughs> <laughs> Is that an order? Yes. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Slocum, remember to relax and let your body go. From the look of it, she already has. <laughs> I'm not having him put a finger on me if he's going to be cheeky. Do you want rescuing or not? I just don't want any of your lip. Uh, 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 Mr. Lucas, are you ready? Ready. Right. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty clear from that. I hope not. 
<laughs> I'm sure we've all got the principle of the thing. Now, uh, Mr. Harmon, perhaps you'd like to take the next point? Oh, thank you, sir. Well, now, in uh, actual fire, our biggest enemy is smoke, but we must not panic. Now, I would like you to assume that the whole building is full of smoke and we cannot see the exits. What do we do? Oh, my mother, tell her to put my mints on a low light. <laughs> We get on our hands and knees on the floor and place our noses to the floor where you will find some breathable air. Everybody done. So oh, this way God. you can keep breathing as you head for the exits. <laughs> oh, blimey, I can still smell that goat. <laughs> there can be no question of my getting down there. Now, well, in your case, Mr Granger, get yourself a snorkel and use it upside down. <laughs> That's a general idea. Now, see if we can remember the rudiments of first day. Well, I hope we can. I've strained my back, carrier, Mrs Slocum. And I shall strain my wrist, but in your ear. <laughs> in the event of the victim being overcome by smoke, there is a favourite method of bringing them round mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, alias the kiss of life. <laughs> oh, kissing, that's it, I'm going out. Just, 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 just a minute, don't be too hasty. <laughs> we don't practice on the ladies. No, we certainly don't practice on the men. <laughs> I, I can't go on. I, I, I mean, I, I can't work under these conditions. I, I'm not getting paid for this, you know. I mean, I'm just getting ordinary overtime. It, it, well, it's insulting. <laughs> I mean, do, do you think I want to go around kissing this lot? I've got an Alsatian at home, I don't even kiss him. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you mustn't take this personally. It's just that we British have a natural resistance to kissing each other. Unless somebody scores a goal and then it's every man for himself. <laughs> yeah, well, if you just let me finish what I was saying, we've always got Myrtle, haven't we? Who's Myrtle? She's the one all the firemen practice on. Oh, that sounds good for you. You ought to join the fire brigade. <laughs> Myrtle is a rubberized, simulated lady what the firemen practice the kiss of life on. You put your clothes down, darling. You're getting a big girl. <laughs> That's typical, isn't it? It has to be a woman. They can't have a man. It's sexual discrimination. <laughs> you try getting 45 burly firemen to kiss a facsimile of Steve McQueen. <laughs> now, the object is to blow down air, and you get enough wind and air to expand the lungs, therefore bringing body life again. Or bringing life back into the body, whichever way you blows down it. Now, if you are blowing correctly, if you are blowing correctly, uh, this will be indicated by the built-in mechanism. Now, I will now give you a demonstration. It's very, very difficult. I, excuse me. Well, it's the first time I've seen that happen. I hope nobody thinks that I'm going to blow into that thing after 45 firemen. Anybody that uses a dummy will be issued with disposable hygienic lips. Do <laughs> 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 we have to wear these if there's a fire? Only if you have to kiss Mrs Slocum. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. No, Slocum, please. please. I'm sure Mr. Lucas will apologise for that unnecessary remark. Lucas. <laughs> the boy's a buffoon. More like a baboon with them lips. Uh, Peacock, you first. No, yeah, very well, sir. You aren't lighting her up. I'm not surprised. He couldn't light me up either in the stockroom last Christmas. <laughs> you too. No sign yet. Come on, Peacock, put some more puff into it. I'm doing my best, sir. That's what he said in the stockroom. <laughs> Alder! Mm. Alder! Mm. in the stock room. <laughs> that interesting, you know. The same thing happens to Mrs. Granger when she eats meringues. <laughs> no wonder she's banned from all the tea rooms. <laughs> no, well, I think in the circumstances we'd, we'd better leave this and go on to the escape. Oh, very good, sir. Well, now, here we have the mock-up of the emergency 
escaped it. Now, in the event of all the passages becoming impassable with smoke, we simply lower this out the window and slide down the chute. You don't realise how dangerous a fire is till you've got one of your own, do you? No, I'm going to have a private fire alarm fitted on my flat. Oh, they're ever so ugly. I'll keep it on the sideboard behind my Paddington bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't need a fire alarm. At the first sign of smoke, my pussy rushes into the garden <laughs> and sits on the concrete tortoise in the middle of the goldfish bowl. <laughs> One Sunday I burnt me Yorkshire. It was there for a whole week. <laughs> no? May we return to the matter in hand and familiarise ourselves with the escape apparatus? Yes, sir. Well, now, all we do here is to jump into the chute. Now, to slow down our descent, you simply spread out your legs. Yes, well, uh... Uh, we're all going to have a go at this. I'm sure it's not as frightening as it looks. And then after each person has been through, she or she may go home. Bugs me, go first. <laughs> Climb every mountain. <laughs> oh, you get quite a nice view from up here. Probably well, better than the one we're getting from down here. <laughs> You've seen Evil Knievel. You're about to see Oakham Slocum in a death-defying dive without a head. You don't dive down it, you sliver down it feet first. You, you just sit on the edge, love. Right, I think at this point we should all uh, turn the other way. I quite agree, I can't stand the sight of accidents. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Isn't that a fire bell? Yes, I expect they're just testing it. Carry on, Mrs Slocum. <laughs> well done, Mrs Slocum, well done. Well done. He's supposed to come out here. <laughs> I can't see. Well, how do we get her out? Well, when I go rabbiting, I usually have a ferret down there. Or... <laughs> he gives it a quick bite, and the rabbit comes out the other end like a cork out of a bottle. <laughs> Hands up for a volunteer to pop in there and bite Mrs. Slocum's bottom. <laughs> you wait till I get out of here, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> Whoa, smoke! Look! <laughs> Good heavens, so there is. Hey, that must have been a real alarm. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, right. no. Listen, listen. What are you lot doing here? Get downstairs quick. We've got a fire in the base. But oh, officer, well, officer, uh, one of our colleagues is tangled up in this thing. Oh, I'll get him out. You beat it. Come on, it's come right. on. Right. Move right. it. Never mind right. that, Mr. Shane. Right. 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 Come on now. What are you waiting for? Oh, it's the chief himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then just me and not a little 